Hello there. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I am Serge T. And in this video I'll be talking about Wednesday's Dynamite. That was April 17th, 2024. What is going on with AEW? When it comes to setting up for their pay-per-view, does anybody have any kind of excitement for Dyn Dynasty? Yes, there is Rampage and there is Collision. But how many people watch Rampage? Collision is kind of slipping off their damn radar now. I don't know if anybody really wants to watch it. Um, you got matches for Collision that include people that already have matches on Sunday. How about give them a rest there, TK? Make Dynamite the last time they face each other and then... Maybe on collision, you just have the guys that are gals that are not going to be on the pay per view. Have them perform, showcase them because you got how many people on your roster, and you're just focused around the same people every damn time. Now let's get into Dynamite. We saw Moxley return, and of course he is the new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion or the new Japan World Heavyweight Champion for short. And uh, he goes out there and talks about uh, whatever he talked about. And then uh, he challenges uh, Will Hobbs. He wants to take on the biggest, the baddest of the Don Callis family. And the fact that they attacked his boy, Brian Danielson, he didn't take too kindly to that. So he wants to, I guess, take these guys on. And uh, one by one wants to eliminate them. Because next week on Dynamite, he's going to face... Will Hobbs. So, uh, see about that. It's great to see Mox back. He is the world heavyweight champion of the IWGP, New Japan, and that's a great thing. He's picking up titles left and right and uh, proving that uh, he's definitely right up there with his fellow Shield members, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. Both of them are without championships. They're right now on the shelf or they're you know, taking a much needed vacation, a much needed rest. But you look at Moxley and he's still going strong. For how much longer? It's up to him really, right? But we'll see. Now, the CEO, we all know who that is. You know, it's not Tony Khan. It sure as hell ain't Vince McMahon. That guy no longer is in charge. We all know that. But it's Mercedes Monet, and she has the entire women's locker room. She wants to put some all on notice. And I'm like, I liked her promo, backstage promo. I liked how she, you know, enunciated and how she didn't overdo it. And she just pretty much was there, and it looked like she was in control of her promo. And she knew what the hell she was, what she wanted to say. Because you know how it is when she, she overdoes her gimmick. And she has that inflection in her voice, and it's just so annoying. She just needs to be herself. Maybe that is herself, but boy, does she go overboard. And she pretty much says, uh, you know, that she's putting the women's locker on notice. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Rhea Ripley. And uh, remember what she said? Yeah. Now, there's a price to pay when you mess with Mercedes Monet. I don't know if she was meant that or she meant it as a rhyme scheme but that's what it sounded like to me there's a price to pay when you mess with mercedes monet okay let's see what happens with mercedes you know it's one of those things it's TikTok time you know it's uh you know you know clock's running are you going to be the uh, needle mover in AEW? Or are you just going to be another woman that that TK is going to be like, eh, I signed her for three for years. Triple H ain't going to get her. I have her right there. She's just gonna, I'm going to sit her right there on her place, and I'm going to use her when I need her. Yeah, she's being featured right now. She has a future uh, TBS title match, but what after that? You know, People are saying that about Cody. What next for Cody? It depends on the creative, right? It depends on... The booking. Same thing with Mercedes. Let's see what happens with her. All right. Now, Edge and Willow, they're in mixed tag team action. And uh, Edge, at first, was in a handicap match. One against two in a mixed tag against Brody King and 
the TBS champion, the reigning TBS champion, uh, Julia Hart. And uh, Willow was taken out. Then she insists that she's uh, ready to go, but she's holding her head. Stats there, and so is, uh, you know, um, what's his name? Their manager. <laughs> but, you know, he's there. Sorry if I forgot his name. But uh, the match is going on, and um, mainly uh, it's uh, Brody and Edge, and uh, Julia Hart doesn't really get involved until we see uh, Willow come down. And then uh, in all of the craziness there, and all of the distraction from the uh, of the referee, he's distracted. And then uh, Julia Hart comes in with a chain and just clocks Willow, and she's down and out. And she puts her in her submission, and she taps her out. And then this brings in uh, Mercedes, and she confronts uh, Julia Hart, who hightails it out of there. And um, we see a little bit of a handshake between Edge and uh, Mercedes, pretty much thanking her for being out there. Willow, same thing. I think they're trying to build tension between those two. Who's the one? One of the one of the commentators said that uh, sh you know. She has a reason. She has a bone to pick with, uh, what do you call it, for her ankle injury. I'm like going, no crap, no shit. Like, it's like, yeah, during the match, she's the one that caused Mercedes to have that that injury. That nearly, you know, cut her career mm -hmm. short. You know, not, you know, forget about the fact that it, it caused her to have to put um, Willow over. And, and she be the, the new champion, the new um, strong women's champion, New Japan. But she almost wasn't able to uh, wrestle anymore. That would have been uh, kind of catastrophic for the wrestling industry because they need Mercedes Monet. I might have my criticisms here and there, but I even agree that they need her. Wrestling needs her. No matter what anybody says, you got to give her her due. And might I add, you know, before I move on, that Julia Hart was wearing some sexy gear. Not so dark as usual, but it sure brightened my night. I mean, hey, I'm a full-blooded, red-blooded American male, man. And, you know, I'm not being disrespectful. If I see Julia Hart looking like that, I'm going to notice. You know, don't, uh, what do you call it? Don't come after me, you know. And Oh, hey, that's not right. Hey, she's a beautiful woman, sexy. She wears ring gear like that. We're not supposed to look. It's like when women wear mini skirts, And then when she sees you know, a dude across the way, she's pulling the mini skirt down. Covering her, like, well, you wore it. I mean, what do you expect? I'm not saying a guy has the right to ogle you, but if you wear it, some guys out there are going to look at you like that. You know, but anyway, let's move on. Shoot. Smojo, the AEW World Champion, he's addressing his upcoming challenger, and that is Swerve Strickland. And uh, he calls Swerve a choke artist. And at Dynasty, even though he is a choke artist, this is what Joe's saying. He's going to be the one making Swerve Strickland choke out. Very straight to the point. Not a lot of, you know, just gabbing away. You no direction whatsoever. Joe, like that, man. He was just on it. Very, very good uh, promo. But Joe always has great promos. You know, anybody there in AEW, if you want to know how to cut a promo, go to Joe. Even though just the youngins over there, the young uh, bucks over there, no pun intended to the young bucks, but the young wrestlers there, they tend to not want to listen to the legends out there, the ones that they got back there. And these guys are idiots. If you're not going to listen to Dustin Rhodes, you're not going to listen to, you know, Daddy Ash, you're not going to listen, you know, Billy Gunn, you're not going to listen to, you know, uh, Brian Danielson, Chris Jericho, Joe. If you don't listen to him, and why the hell are you there? Take advantage of that. Take advantage of the fact that you got those legends there because they're not going to be around forever. You know what I'm saying? And we're seeing some wrestlers, you know, drop left and right. In recent, um, you know, you, you know, all the legends that we had, they're 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 going, they're gone. Pretty soon, it's going to be what? Nobody left. And what are you going to do? Just go on your own and then look like an idiot out there because you didn't listen. Now, the new elite backstage, they. Uh, you know, of course, that's uh, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson and uh, Okada. And uh, they are addressing their opponents for Dynasty. And, uh, you know, they're there. 
with their dope of a, you know, the goof of a boss, Tony Khan, just sitting there and looking like a dope. Like, here's, you know, the rumors that he has no control over his roster and that he just wants to be friends with these guys and he's just, yes, 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 he, he doesn't want to hurt their feelings. You have Matt and Nick Jackson back there and they're saying, oh, we're going to do this. Is it okay with you, boss? And it's something that they're doing that you know, don't do, don't do that because that's kind of disrespectful or whatever. And here's him. He's... Like, is he really like that or is he playing a damn uh, role because he's on camera? I kind of got a glimpse of him and he looks really serious like, hey, hey. But then I'm like going, if that's how he really is, then this company is in the hands of a child. This guy was not even pretending to act like a boss, you know. And I'm thinking, is that how he really is backstage? Where these guys say, I'm going to do this, man. Is it okay with you? Instead of them going, I don't know. Let's go over that. Let's think about that. Mm, okay. Yeah, sure. He didn't even say anything. He just goes. And he's looking around like he's, like he did another line of coke. I don't know what the hell he's doing. Like he's on something. You know what I mean? Like, what is he doing? Why does he look like that? It's been like that. How many? Like that. It reminds me of the, that one video that someone put on X, Right? And I saw someone, one of the content creators out there, looking at the video. And it's like, it's him going out there after, what, five hours of, I guess it was dynamite and then uh, collision or whatever it was combined. And then he wants people to stay for ROH, another, what, couple hours. And I'm like, he's out there looking like a jilted boyfriend that's constantly talking to, talking to his girlfriend trying to convince her take me back he's doing that it looks like that like he's just constantly talking and and he's trying to convince people to stay and he's bringing up these different subjects and why this person's great why we're, we're great here we're doing this we're doing that and i'm going you sound like a damn desperate jilted boyfriend like trying to convince your girl to come back that's what it looks like and people are leaving. Some people are staying. God bless their heart because well, you stay there for eight hours total. But it looks like he's a guy who has no control over his company. And that's been the, the talk that he, is he really fit to be a damn, you know, he takes on everything. Booker, see, he's a CEO, he's the president, he's the, you know, creative head. He's the, the all this, all these hats that he has, you know. And the fact of the matter that he said in the past that he doesn't want nobody else controlling any of those. He wants all of that because he wants it to be one mindset, one thought. He doesn't want to have some other people bringing different thoughts to him. I'm, Geez, TK, aren't you supposed to be like taking what you what you can use and what you can't use? That's why you have different people because they bring different ideas that maybe you wouldn't have thought. There are people that say that, oh, how come you didn't do this? How come you didn't do that for a dynamite? And then if... He would solve that if he has people that are taking care of different things. And in that way, they can come together. It can be a conglomerate of ideas and comes together and it's like it meshes. You know, he can't do that. He can't be doing a Vince McMahon where Vince McMahon wanted to control everything. Right up to the minute before Raw or the minute before SmackDown. Ah, I want to change that, pal. I don't like that. And then... You have to go to the wrestlers and tell them it's, it's a, there's a change. You got to do this now. To give them a script, a last minute script. Here you go. They're like this, and sometimes you notice that they're out there and they look like they're chickens with heads cut off because they don't, because they just got changed. They don't do that now, you know, because Vince is gone. But you know, and there's a thing that, that I just someone brought it up in one of their videos, and I'm thinking, is it true? It's something about Vince McMahon. And I'll talk about that on. Um, on my weekend wrestling uh, video, which will be coming up. I'm probably going to do it on Saturday because Sunday is, uh, I forgot, to, the Sunday is Dynasty. And, I, and I'm and i pretty sure I'm going to cover it but because uh, it looks like a good pay-per-view, but we'll see if I want to, if I want to, you know, what's that? Want to, you know, spend a 50 bucks on it. I mean, TK, you guys, you guys need to get a, what do you call it? You need to get a, a streaming deal. That way, Every month you can have a pay per view, put it on like WWE does, and we're only going to be paying you nine, ten dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? Because it's really ridiculous that in this day and age, paying 50, 60, 70 dollars. I know they don't do that with AEW, I think they do that with boxing. They, 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 they want to 
make you pay, you know, out your ass, pay, you know, give an arm and a leg for, you know, these pay-per-views. I see, you know what I mean? But uh, anyway, uh, we'll move on from that. I think something has to be done, man, like when it comes to delegating the responsibilities. And TK wants to, it's his company, so he can do it. But, you know, a lot of people are saying, man, hey, delegate it, man, because then you won't look like you're, you're, what do you call it, that you're burned out and that you are coming up with storylines that don't make sense and matches that are just for the purpose of just having a banger match. That, that's not how it should go. You know what I mean? Come on, man. But um, they claim, going back to the six-man tag match with the Elite, the new Elite, and they're going to be taking on Pac and Daniel Garcia and Penta. And Okada's the one that said, you know, you're not going to make it, Pac. You're not going to make it to Dynasty. And um, in this match, we find out that Frey Phoenix is injured. I'm thinking, is this a deja vu or is it, again, another injury? And we all know why, folks. It's because the way AEW wrestlers perform in the ring. It's all about, let's show these guys that we can take a pile driver on the on the hardest part of the ring. You know, we always say that, the hardest part of the ring. And these guys have taken that as a challenge. Oh, let's see. You guys want to say that's the hardest part of the ring? We're going to show you that we can take any kind of move. Pile drivers, Canadian destroyers, Death Valley drivers, um, you know, you know, you know, suplexes and, and fucking brain busters and all that stuff. And I'm just like, oh, what the fuck is wrong with you people? That's not a challenge. That's not a, a, a reason for you to go, oh, I'm going to do these moves on there. You do know that you're shortening your careers. Pretty soon we're going to hear that, that Penta can no longer go. You know. Remember when Dante Martin, I think he did a bump. It was against um, Pac. I mean, not Pac, but Penta. Those tables were stacked up. He goes through the table. And I, you know, and I know you people have seen it. He's looking, either he's looking straight ahead or he's looking the other way. But the foot, his foot is looking the other way. Like if he's looking behind, if he's looking back, his foot's facing this way. Or if he was looking forward, his foot was facing the other way. I'm going, what, how in the hell did they take his shoes and socks off? It must have been painful or they might have put them out, you know. Maybe, maybe drugged them and made, you know, put them to sleep so that they can do that. Because I could not see those guys pulling that. And who knows how much, how it was hanging off of the ligaments or whatever. This guy is so damn talented. And, and it's like, he's doing all these unnecessary bumps. That's like, I get it. You want to show them that you can put these moves off. But it's like, that's why the people are, are, are happy. And I am too, that Osprey isn't wrestling every week. Because you know, you see how he wrestles? You only, you only should be able to you should wrestle like him on pay-per-views. Because if you do that every week, you're done. <laughs> it's like so many risks that he takes. And it's great to see. It's like, it's like with Ricochet. You know, that these guys take so kind of risks that they take. And it's just like, one of these days, they're going to catch up to your ass. And AEW's got some great performers, but these guys are constantly injured. Like with Ray Phoenix. I have not seen him. He probably has not done a full year without being injured. I wonder if that if that's ever been the case. Maybe the first year in 2019, maybe. I don't know. But they faced those guys. And then in the end, we have a super kick party followed up by a Rainmaker on Garcia. And then the new elite. I know they call it elite, but they, they are referred to as the new elite too because, you know, they fired Omega because he didn't, he wasn't, he wasn't uh, what do you call it? He didn't uh, fulfill his obligations in AEW, but yet he's recovering from diverticulitis. Come on, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson. You should know better. But they get the victory. Okada is being booked really, really well, really strong. And when he talks English, man, it's just what he needs to say. And it makes him look even more impressive in the ring. You know, We don't expect him to talk a whole damn promo, but what he says... It, 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 that's all you need to do. Just make your point, and then people will be like, "Damn, that 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 got me right here, man." I'm like, "Oh shit," you know. Instead of him up there trying to talk and talking, and then he just he's 
accent and his thickness and his inability to speak perfect English starts coming through. They did that with Asuka. They did that with, uh, you know, you know Shinsuke. And sometimes, you know, with Shinsuke, of course, we've seen what he does. It happens with him. He's like he ends up having the subtitles, and it makes it even more powerful because he's talking Japanese, but then he has the subtitles. And you know how these guys, when they talk Japanese, and it sounds, they can make it like, especially with him, he talks a little sinister-like. And you hear any kind of a foreign language, but then you see the English subtitles, it makes it more impactful. And I'm glad that he did that. And that's, of course, I'm sure that's Triple H. That's not, you know, nobody else. Because he knows these guys' strengths, and he uses it, and he, he shows it. He, You know what I mean? And that's what you need to do. You know, don't try to make these guys do something that they can't do. You know? If they're not full grasp with the English language, don't make them cut a promo and try to talk English. But you haven't fully grasped it yet. No. Let's move on. Like and this, this, I'm like, I saw the graphic. I'm like, Taz brokers a, was that a meeting or a, what it was with Hook and Jericho? And I'm like, well, why does Taz have to do that? Haven't these two guys been partnering up? You know, but yeah, you know, last week Jericho pulled Hook off the the apron and it cost them the match because Shibata. Ended up losing the match for them because he had no one to tag. Jericho was saying that, well, you weren't doing what I expected you of you to do. And I'm like, well, you guys were about to win, you idiot. You know, and it just seems that Jericho wants to leash off of the rising stardom of Hook. You can see it. And then Hook says no to Jericho because Jericho offered, yeah, I want to take you to the top. Take you, what was that, a wizard mountain? Like, um, what? <laughs> wizard mountain. What's that? A take on damn uh, Space Mountain with uh, what do you call it? With with Ric Flair? Did Ric Flair come up with that? You no. Know? I mean, there's two different meanings with the Space Mountain and with Jericho or with the uh, Wizard Mountain. You know, we we know what Wizard, you know what Space Mountain was with with what's his name with uh, Flair. And uh, he kept saying stuff, kept saying to Hook that. Uh, Whoever's around you, they haven't raised you right. They haven't taught you how to be tough. And then Taz is like, calm down now. Hold your horses, man. So that, that. And then Jericho just going, yeah, you need to shut up. Yeah, I'm talking here. And they got to a point where he pushed Taz. And Taz went up, you know, went back into the ropes and stuff. And I guess Taz is retired for a reason. He can't take a bump, I guess. Because I would expect him to go right behind Jericho and put him in a damn, you know, that's Taz mission, right? But I guess he can't. And then, you know, White Collar pretty much pushed him against the damn corner, hooked it to Jericho, and said, man, you stepped over the line, man. And it's, and it's about time that, you know, that that uh, Taz acts like a father. You know, because Jericho was, like, insulting him and his son and definitely his family, even the, the guys who were training him and he was born and he was when he was born and growing up he was a i'm sure he saw you know tommy dreamer and sabu and all these other guys growing up so he's kind of insulting all those people and then hook was like you know enough of this shit it's like you know you stepped over the line and i need you to get out of my ring and he's looking at him making sure at least he didn't do a what do you call that the the baby face the dumb baby face syndrome where they turn their back on the guy that's right there and that person ends up or if someone's music plays they they look at the thing, looking at the Titan Tron or looking at the damn video. And then behind them comes the, the opponent or whoever that music belongs to. But then Jericho went out the ring. He was still jawing away at him. So is anybody really excited about this match? You know, I mean, it's going to be Jericho challenging Hook for the FTW Championship. I mean, even Excalibur's like hyping it up like, you know what do you call this? The only two-time, uh, what do you call it? Hook is the only two-time FTW champion, like his father Taz. But yet this title doesn't mean shit. But then you guys keep hyping it up like it is. They've even said in the past it's not a recognized title. But then why you guys have it there? You're making Hook look weak. It's like give him a legit title already. You know he's had his shot. He had a shot at the world title against Joe, right? And that was a great match. It made him look good. But then here he is with the saddle with the FTW championship. It's a legendary title. Taz introduced it in ECW. Everybody knows about the championship. You know? 
Don't let it be something like he's just holding it like the million dollar championship when it came to Ted DiBiase Jr. And that's the only championship that of a, of singles I believe that he that he held. He had Maurice as his uh, manager at that time, and I'm like, was this Ted DiBiase Senior 2.0 like being like his father? That's you know what I mean. So it's like you want these guys to be like. This is a second generation superstar. This guy is an amazing performer in that ring. You know what I mean? Like, dude, give him his due, man. Come on, TK, push the dude. Make him. You're, yeah, you're putting him in, in a program with Jericho, and that's all I'm fine and dandy because he's gonna be. He's gonna look good. Hopefully, he's gonna look good after it, and that's gonna make him look great. Not like, you know, uh, Zoe Stark who was teamed up with Trish Stratus in WWE, and then. You look at her now after that feud and after that thing that they're doing against Becky Lynch, and it's like, is Zoe Stark any better for that? No. So is Hook going to be any better for working with Jericho? That's something you have to ask yourself. Don't just be like, oh, yay, it looks like Jericho is going to help Hook. Well, is it going to help him? That's the only thing we can hope for because everybody loves Hook. You know, we're behind him. I'm behind him. I think he's a great guy, great wrestler, great performer, great kid. And I think he's going to do well in his future. You know, you're going to be seeing people like him and like, uh, you know, and like, um, it's all the guys, you know, the pillars, right? They're going to be the future of AEW, hopefully, if they do have a future. You know, Is, are, are people slowly turning away from AEW? You know, is it the alternative anymore? Like people say, it's not the alternative anymore. Because they're not doing anything different than WWE. They're trying to equal them. And they have things that they're doing that's making it maybe a little bit more better than WWE. You want to put your eyes on it because WWE does this. I like when AEW does this. But can they keep that up? That's the question. Now, Swerve is approached by uh, Renee Paquette. And uh, it's always great to see Renee. And he gives his rebuttal, the Swerve. And he says that he's not a choke artist. You know, he says he admits, you know, he stumbled out of the gate a bunch of times. And but he says that he has fallen into success. And that's what that's, that, that he has done that he has done. He's great. I didn't know what they were going to do with him at first. It was pretty shaky. They put him in there with Keith Lee. Keith Lee. I mean, why are the missing pamphlets, the missing flyers for him, along with um, what you call it, along with, uh, you know, uh, Miro? Do they have milk cartons? Are they selling that as a? As, a, as an item that you can buy in AEW shop, milk cartons with their faces on it. Where is Keith Lee? Is he just going to wait out his uh, time and his contract and then he's going to go back to WWE? Same thing with Miro. You talk about people that don't need to be pushed or don't need to be put on TV. They, they, AEW has that. Even WWE has that. But put the people that, like Miro and like Keith Lee, put them... When you see a dude that's 350 pounds that can do a damn jumping, spinning kick, and you think it's guys like Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan and those guys who are fit, I mean thin and you know, you know, abs and all that shit, and they're the only ones that can do that. But then you see that guy do it. It's a, it's amazing. It's mind blowing. As a martial artist myself, back in the day, I'm like, holy crap! He kicked over someone's head. I mean, how did he do that? It's amazing, right? No, you don't want to put them there. You know, push these other guys that you've been pushing to the moon and back, and they don't need to be pushed anymore because they're already major stars. Get some of these guys that haven't been pushed in recent, you know, memory. Come on, man. But um, the thing is, he goes, I mean, you call, it's a Joe. He's all, you call me a choke artist, a parasite. But after Dynasty, he's going to be called the new AEW world champion. And then he goes, whose house? And of course, everybody goes, Swerve's house. And then Randy Paquette goes, how do you know that you can beat Joe? And he basically says, you know what? Kind of like saying, I'll do respect. I don't want to tell you, but I'm going to tell Joe. And he just walks off. And then we're going to see that later on in the uh, closing um, segment of the show. Now, Mariah May, she comes out looking like Tony Storm of old. I love the fact that she's adopted that. Gimmick. It's almost like I missed that. So it's like, hey, get let her let her have it. That's fine. That's cool. And uh, she faces uh, Diana Perazzo, the virtuosa. So the virtuosa is going to go up against one on one against the old school Tony Storm. And uh, after a so so match, one bad, one good. It was this there. 
We even seen uh, what call it? Uh, Mariah May do the damn uh, what? Sweet cheek music, right? Doesn't have as much as, much, as she doesn't have the uh, an apple cheeks like uh, Tony Storm does. But you see, even when she hit it, there was a lot, a lot of impact with her. With her, you know, with her damn uh, you know backside there. So you know that when Tony Storm hits it, that's the reason why you see someone's head nearly um, going to the stands. You know, that's how much impact. And she does it pretty good, you know. But, but you know, in the end, we see how Deanna Parasso gets the victory. It's not with her submission hold. That's not with any other move, but it's with... It's the move that it's the greatest move in all of wrestling. What's that move you say? You know, it's wherein because in here in WWE, you know, in AEW, everybody and their grandma kicks out of the finishers. I mean, you know, left and right, they're they're coming out of you know they're kicking out of the damn finishers. You know, and how does she get the victory? It's with a roll up. And I guess the roll-up is the most protected move in all of uh, wrestling. As I see it in other wrestling, I see it when I was watching TNA before, that WWE does that. I think we need to stop doing that shit because it's like, why is it that it's like the simple move of a roll-up? And it depends on what, no matter what, the Oklahoma roll, it could be a damn sunset flip, it could be any kind of roll-up, but it always ends up winning a match. But you know, you see Canadian Destroyers, people kick out. You see... And I seen it like recently an RKO. I think I've only seen people two people kick out of an RKO, but I've seen that happen in recent months. I've seen you know devastating moves. I mean even KO now when he does his um, his Stone Cold Stunner, his Stunner, people kick out. But oh no, not the I guess because the roll up is the surprise move because someone gets up behind you. That is the thing where like it should be brought out once in a while, like the super kick where the super kick now is relegated to a a, a regular move now. But it's like, that was like one of those moves, like, you got somebody caught them off guard. And they do they do present it like that sometimes, where they catch somebody off guard, right? But it's like, stop with that nonsense, because it's like, you're making these finishing moves look obsolete. Pile drivers, uh, Canadian destroyers, you got brain busters, right? Power bombs, and these guys are kick, people kicking out of these moves. It's ridiculous, I know. But um, after all that, and then we see Thunder Rosa come out. She's the challenger at Dynasty for the AEW Women's World Championship because she never lost. She had to relinquish it because of her injury. I believe, what was that, her back or something like that? And people were calling her out saying that she was a phony, which it, it wasn't. I don't know why people want to say that. She, she was injured, and you know. Why am I going to say, oh, no, she wasn't injured? I don't know who she is. I don't know her personally. I'd like to beat her and we shake her hand, and tell her I'm a fan, you know? Sure. But it's like they're doing that, but she came out and she gets into it with Deanna Perrazzo. It's like I mean she did what she did with uh Tony Storm and she pretty much lets Tony know that uh, I'm ready for a Sunday. But then they're trying to do a thing now with uh Perrazzo and, and Thunder Rosa. It's like is there gonna be something like that? Like after the post uh dynasty show, they're gonna start doing something with them. It's mostly supposed to be friends, but then again, that's that narrative again. They're friends. They're friends. But then you know that the best of friends are going to end up splitting. That's, that, that's a built-in storyline right there, man. Like two best friends and then they break up and we get a, a rivalry, a, a feud for like a couple of months that'll, that'll fill in the space between pay-per-views, between storylines, you know, something like that, whatever. That's another crutch that these guys need to get away from. And then we got the Bang Bang Gang. About to say Bang Bang Secrets the Gang, but then I'm gonna end up I'm gonna end up throwing myself out my window. And uh, they come out and they target the trios titles held by uh, the acclaimed, of course. And they're gonna put their ROH six man tag team titles on the line if they put their you know trios titles on the line. Winner take all. And I'm like, it's about time. It wasn't just the setup. Wasn't this the thing where they got came together and act all buddy buddy, which was so forced. These three. These six gentlemen would not ever hang out in reality. I mean, it's just, it's just, it was just one of the cringiest things that I've ever seen. And then, of course, later on, the acclaim accept, and why wouldn't they? 
put yourself out there on the damn program, you know. And it's not that I care. And of course, like I said, it's going down at Dynasty, and then then they say let's take it old school and let's do it uh, the acclaim versus the guns on Collision. I'm like, oh, and am I gonna watch Collision just because of that? They can they can pull out a, a good match, but it's like, do I care? And then another thing that I always think about, I always talk about. The instantaneous graphic by TK, you know, like right after, you don't even give like 30 seconds, a minute, a commercial break, right when someone says, I'll, I'll accept your challenge, and then it goes to um, Excalibur, and hey, look, it's official, yeah, official after a second, I get it that it's scripted, I get it, folks, it's scripted, and, and la, 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 but it's like, how about you make it kind of realistic and go, wait till like they come back from a break, or come back from a damn match and then go hey it's official but no right after someone accepts the challenge there's the graphic or oh, they had all that it's supposed to be a, an impromptu challenge that's how it's presented so it's so stupid when they do that because it's like it's a impromptu challenge that no one expected yet tony khan he's 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 you know he's johnny on the damn spot right and gets the damn pr promo like right away like does he have people like this going okay Oh, okay, they're putting out a challenge, okay, to uh to the claim. Okay, let's, let's put the damn thing. Cause he might the claim might um what do you call it? They might um accept the challenge. Okay. All right, TK, we got it ready. Okay, okay. So as soon as they accept it, it's stupid. It's like it's like it's like I don't know, it's like kindergarten. Um it's like kindergarten, it's like elementary stuff. It's like these guys just don't know how to to do it in a way that makes it believable. Right away, instantaneously, there's a damn graphic when someone was just putting out an impromptu challenge. It wasn't like it was it was anticipated, you know. <laughs> Give me a break. It's so ridiculous, dude. Seriously, talk about ridiculous. Orange Cassidy versus Shane Taylor from Shane Taylor Promotions with Anthony Agogo and uh, what was the other guy, Lee Moriarty. And then it's like, who cares? Like, not Orange. I love Orange. I love Orange Cassidy. But his opponent, is all, his opponent, it's like all kinds of who gives a shit. It's like, you know, and the guy is strong, tough. The guy can go in the ring. He's a big, fat dude, you know, because you got guys like Joe and guys, guys, guys like even in WWE. They don't look like they're overweight. They just look like they're big. This dude just looks like he's just a guy off the street, you know, fat slob. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't really, really carry his, his, his weight well. And, and, and who am I to say? Because I'm a, I'm a bigger boy myself. I'm a fat guy myself. You know? <laughs> but it's like I'm not wrestling. So that's that. You know? But he's in there and he's impressive. I mean, he, he can go. You know? But it's like, does anybody really care about him? Shane Taylor Promotions. Really? That's the name of your group? And you got two of the, of the biggest damn who gives a crap too. Two guys who are like, you know, what do you call it? They're, they're just like... The, the, they're like the highest of them, what do you call it, uh, jobbers. Like, they're not even, they're not, they're, you know, he doesn't even have anybody that's like at least, maybe he should have did something where, you know, Keith Lee ends up with them. At least that would give him some kind of shine, but, you know, all he did was feud with him. Shane Taylor and uh, Keith Lee would walk in. When Keith Lee has an interview, he'd come in. Hey, man, you used to be a cool guy, man. And, you know, you know so like he would, he would do that every time for months. I'm like going, where's this going, you know? But anyway, one of the things that when it comes to the um, Orange Cassidy, man, is like, why is it that when he does that tilt the world DDT, he's about to do it, right? He always gets caught. Someone always thwarts it. And then when he does it again, he ends up flipping around or even like in that instance, he'll 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 like spin around and hit a stun dog millionaire. Like, we get it, you know, like that's the setup, but holy fuck. Like, you know, and then after like a, a, a series of moves here and a series of punches, a series of attempts of the orange punch, he finally connects on Taylor and then he gets to win. But then St. Taylor Promotions gets to drop on him. And then you see some guys come out trying to help, you know, Christopher Daniels and some other schlub. I think it was uh, Evan Bourne. I mean, Matt Seidel. Uh, and um, it ends up that it's a guy who pulls his hood up and it's Trent Breda. And uh, I guess his best friend is now a sworn enemy. So we see where we're going to go with that. I mean, I like Trent. And there's a reason to break them up. Let's see what, what the reason is. We'll see. 
Now, the main event is Claudio versus Osprey. And that's a typical Osprey match with the unmatched power of Claudio, right? Combine, you know, colliding, you know. And, uh, you know, what, you, what more are you going to get from uh, a match featuring these two amazing athletes? I actually do. I very much enjoy it. I didn't, at first, when it came to, uh, what's his name? With Osprey, but he's grown on me. And I think that he's one of the best. He is, truly. But in the end, you know, we see that hidden blade. Very impressive, boo. You got to get it on somebody when they're when they're not looking your way, and he connects on Claudio, and he Osprey gets the win. And then we see the Don Callis family. You know, we see Kyle Fletcher, we see um, Hobbs, right, come out there, and then Mox comes out, and he cleans house, and he's saying, "Man, you're not gonna get another one of my buddies. You got Danielson, you're not gonna get Claudio." And then. Osprey after all that, because Osprey was just on the on, a, on a, he was like on a on the ring floor, and he's like, like as if he's like this, like, man, he's like his hands are like clean of that thing. He, he doesn't want to have anything to do with that. And then he's all getting on them and getting mad at them, you know. And I'm just thinking that what's going to happen with that? Are they going to turn on Osprey? Because Osprey is a baby face. Like he doesn't want to have be involved in them shenanigans. You know what I mean? Why would he? It's just like. That's not what he's about now. Since ever since he returned, the fans love him. Nobody likes Don Callis and his family. You know, even with Takeshita, yeah, he's another guy that was there too, who tried to beat down uh, Claudia. Not saying they like them because they are sucky. They're a great group. It's just the fact that they're heels. You know, why, why, why are you gonna cheer him, cheer, cheer them when it's Osprey? Osprey's the one that we want to cheer, not those guys. They're, they're, they're bona fide heels. You know, I mean, Takeshita has bought in. <laughs> he's really a, a, the alpha, right? He's he's not he's not fucking around with being a babyface no more. You know, and that's that, and that's a setup, I guess, for a future match between the the Blackpool Combat Club and the and the Don Callis family. We have seen that in certain things, but we, of course we're gonna see Mox taking on what do you call it, taking on, you know, Will Hobbs taking on Mox. So we'll see. And then um, on Collision, I guess it should kind of, t supposed to, you know, kind of wet your palate, wet, you know, kind of, you know, make you go, ooh, you know, I, I want to go watch it. You know, we have another six-man tag, FTR and Pac, right? And they're taking on the, the uh, what do you call it, the Elite, right? Yeah. And don't these guys have, in the, like I said earlier, they have their own matches on Sunday, Dynasty? And I'm like, why don't you rest them up there, TK? Your show is, that's like not even the B show. That's like the C show. Because we all know that, that uh, Rampage is the F show. And then just put people under that haven't been on TV. You know, save these guys since they've already wrestled. And you're going to keep wrestling them? You know, like, I mean, TK is a guy that is not beyond, it's not, a, it's not above uh, putting, uh, like we did with, um, with uh, MJF. Defending the, the tag team titles, then being a, on the main event, defending his world title. I mean, letting people go, making people go twice. But um, let's end it, this video. It's getting, old, it's getting late. It's 12.30 right now in the, in the, in the, in the a.m. And this is uh, quoting uh, Swerve. So why do I believe I can beat Samoa Joe? He said, the answer is simple. And the answer was that he saw fear in Joe's eyes. You know, and then Joe comes out because he's not gonna let Swerve run him down. He's there, security's around him, and then Swerve just does a massive Swerve stomp on the security force, takes him down, and he looks something like a superhero. You know, looking superhero like as he lands, he just lands like how those superheroes land after they destroy people, and then he just like this, he he strikes a pose, and then. They end up getting into it. Joe is is hit with a, a neuralizer, you know, as we call it, that uh, that swerve, that swerve uh, kick. They kick somebody in the side of his head, right? But then Joe, is not having it. He ends up uh, putting a uh, swerve into the uh, to the muscle buster, and then he just stands over, you know. That's over Swerve. And then that's how it ended. My question is, is that is, did Dynamite, you know, satisfy those who are looking at a really good way to segue into the pay-per-view? 
you know, it's the go home show, right? But then again, we do have Collision, but does Collision have anything to do with Dynasty? They do have the the participants, like I mentioned, the match, right? I think there's that. I think there's a like a what do you call it too. I think I missed it. But it's a, a bunkhouse brawl. Yeah, between Danielson and and Castanoli taking on Tekeshta and uh, Fletcher. A bunkhouse brawl, a violent match that you're gonna sacrifice and you're going to possibly injure these guys and they got matches, especially Danielson. Give me a break. TK over books, man. He's like he's a guy that doesn't believe in resting people. Especially when they got big matches coming up. Am I looking forward to Dynasty? The matches look great, a great card, but it's like, do I want to watch it? Do I want to do a video about it? I'm probably going to definitely check it out, but uh, there goes the 50 bucks that I could have used on something else. But we'll see. If I don't do a video, then you'll know why. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, it's getting late, so I'm going to cut it here. And pretty much that is my, pretty much my rundown, my thoughts on uh, Dynamite. And, um, and it was here and there, kind of went like this, like a roller coaster. You got some highs and you got some lows. You got some highs, you got some lows. But um, I might see um, Collision, I might not. We'll see. Too much wrestling. I don't got much enough time for all rushing all wrestling because it's just a lot to absorb and to take in. Especially now that there is a pay-per-view. So <laughs> I didn't even anticipate that. And I forgot, oh, that's right, Dynasty is coming up. But, um, well, you know, that's my video. Uh, so for those of you who stopped by and checked it out, I appreciate it. Um, please uh, throw me a like, uh, share the video, subscribe if you like what you see. I would appreciate that. Also, click that notification button so that uh, you'll know when I upload. So, well, that's that. So until next time, uh, take care, and I will see you in my next video.